The Fat Controller first met Toby and Henrietta a long time ago when he was on holiday in East Anglia. Later, when their line was closed, the Fat Controller heard about it and brought them to Sodor. Before that, Toby had worked as a harbour with several of his brothers. The harbour had been busy and the engines were kept bustling about. But Toby never really had a chance to exercise his distance properly until he had his own line to run on. One day, Toby was resting alone in the shed at Farquhar. That morning, Percy had been talking about the harbour at Knapford. Toby remembered the old days when he had worked at a harbour too. I'm too old now to dash about like I did then, he thought. Backwards and forwards all day long, between the harbour and the big station, with never any chance of a holiday. But I did go to the seaside once, he remembered. For a while, anyway. His driver and fireman had been so excited when they came to work one day. We've been promised a trip to the seaside, they said. What do you mean? asked Toby. There's a seaside village near here, explained the driver, where they have a festival each year. Lots of people come to it, and one of the organisers thinks it would be a good idea to have a display of engines at the station as an extra attraction. And you, Toby, are to be one of them. given new paint, a new bell, and his brasswork was polished until his driver could see himself in it. You haven't looked so smart for years, he said. I nearly didn't recognise you. They set out for the junction where the branch lines of the village began. As they arrived, a train came in from the bank. The engine was younger than Toby, but he was dirty, his rods clanked, and steam leaked from everywhere. The poor engine, said Toby. Can I help pull his next train to the seaside, please? The station master agreed, so Toby was coupled in front. Festival time is the best time of the year, the other engine said. Lots of extra trains and visitors. I expect you'll be able to stand on the long carriage siding. They soon reached the seaside station where the station master came out to meet them. He was surprised to see Toby. He stared, frowned and went away shaking his head. Next day, Toby was excited. He woke early and saw the sea sparkling in the distance. White birds wheeled and swooped overhead, making loud, mewing noises. I wonder what they are, thought Toby. I must ask my driver when he comes. But his crew arrived looking glum. It's all off, Toby, his driver said. They say there's nowhere for you to stand. But what's wrong with where I am, wailed Toby. I'm not in anybody's way here. It's just an excuse, I reckon, said Toby's driver, lowering his voice. The real trouble is, you're too smart, Toby. They're afraid you'll show their branch line up. Just then, a door banged. Toby jumped. Wake up, Toby, smiled his driver. Time to get back to work. Toby sighed as he moved from the shed. Well, I did get to the seaside, he murmured, even if it wasn't for long. But I think the fat controller would have managed all that festival business much better.